Hey guys, what's up? It's Zach Hamster here with Legendary Fishing. I am back at the farm pond out here. See if we can get any more of those big crappie. Uh, I rigged up a slip float. You will see how I rigged that up in just a moment. Um, I'm going to start using, well, I'm going to be using live shiners. So, um, I'll get those out of the bag and in the bucket and show you how to rig those up uh, right quick if you are new to the channel please like and subscribe uh, if you haven't already and um, give me a couple of follows on both Instagram and uh, fish brain the yeah, actual fish brain I upload these catches typically the day that I catch them if not if it's not too late um, but let's get started I dump these shiners into the bucket and get one out and get it on the well, and show you how I hook it up hey guys what's up um, this is before my little intro here I'm going to show you guys how to uh, um, rig up a slip flip rig so today I am crappie fishing well, crappie and bass, but mostly crappie. So, I've got these little, you know, let me take it out of the package. It's a bobber stop. Um, so, it's the ones I'm using. This is what they look like. <clears throat> now, you notice. It's the little bead. It's plastic. It's rubber, actually. Uh, and then it's got the wire going through it. And it makes a loop. So what you do, take your line, put it through that loop. And you're going to pull that plastic, no, I keep saying plastic, but rubber bead off. Now, it's on the line. I'll pull it up a little ways. Get your floats. This is the one I'm going to start with. It has a little hole. It has a little hole. I don't know if that's going to focus, but you can place your line right down the middle. Feed it through until it comes out the other end. Now, that's where your float stops. I'm going to pull it up my line a little bit. I'm going to put my hook on there. It's a little owner hook. A mosquito hook. Uh, this is the smallest one I was able to find. I usually use smaller than this, but this is the smallest one I could find. Uh, I like using mosquito hooks or circle hooks just I like the style of hook pretty much it's the only uh, re real reason go ahead and tie this on here I'm gonna use a uh, clinch knot also known as trilane knot just spin it around and put my tag in through the loop pull and there's another little loop your tag in made and you put, pushed it through that loop. Just cinch it down. Take the tag in off. Then I'm going to use these little pinch on weights. I'm going to put two of them on. 
the ones I'm using right now. Now, I'm just going to pinch these on just to show you where I do it, and then I'm going to get a, uh, a pair of pliers off camera. But let me open these up just a little bit more. So it's about, you know, four inches from my uh, hook or so. Do the same thing with this one. I'm going to put this one above it. No reason in particular, just where I'm going to do it. But, there you go. So, just to recap, I got the, uh, come on now, steady, I got the uh, bobber stop there, a slip float, and then the hook, I can get this thing going to start swinging, hook, and the weight. <clears throat> and once we get down to the water, um, I'll, I'll show you guys the, the what I'm using for bait and how to rig them. See y'all then. So, here's my hook. Well, number two on our mosquito hook. What I'm going to do with this little shiner is hook him right at the dorsal fin. Just like that. Now, that's one way to do it. I'm not going to poke a whole bunch of holes in this one particular little fish. I'll show you how I rig the different ones as I get to them let's see I've only got this set at about two foot maybe two and a half I can tell you already I'm gonna probably lose most of my gear because I'm gonna be throwing right into this fallen tree let's see how long it takes to get get a bite I may have to adjust the depth as I, I don't know exactly how deep it is right there but I know it's pretty deep but the, with the limbs and stuff try not to get in to the limbs real bad missed him okay well that gives me opportunity to show you how uh, another way I'd rig it now come on now so with this one I'm gonna go in between the eyeball and the eye socket that way I mean it's not going through his eyes Oh, that's a fish. There we go. Oh, it's a little bass. <laughs> oh, he came off right there. Oh, well. Got the good out of him. Got the fight out. Oh, there's another fish. There we go. Another bass. Let's see. Let's see if I can actually get this one in. There we go. Oh, dang it. Nope. I still got my bait, too. Yeah, but he ain't looking too well. I think I'm going to throw that back in there. Let the turtles eat it. Let's 
so it might be a bass kind of day instead of crappie. There we go. What's this one? Another bass? Yep. There. Actually landed one. A little dinky one, but right in the corner of the mouth. Uh, you'd thought it was a circle hook, by the way. It was hooked in there. A little bass to start the day off with. See you later, buddy. There we go. I think this one's a crappie. It is. There we go. That's what we're after. Nice crappie. Shiner's still alive. Alrighty. Let's see. I mean, I'd say that's probably about 14 inches. Alright. I'm going to put this one back. See you later. Even though this Shiner's still alive, I've got plenty of them. Right now, I'm going to get a fresh one <laughs> doing the same thing just different style float There's a fish. There he is. Crappie. It's actually the smallest crappie I've caught down here in a long time. Huh. Well, that's about average size. Of the Actually, that's on the larger side of the spectrum from one of the other ponds on this property. Except you'd catch during the springtime, you'd catch probably well, well over a hundred if you left if you spent the whole day. But crappie number two, see you later, buddy. Get bigger. Biggest crappie I've caught down here was I want to say it was 15 and a half inches or six, no, 16 and a half. It's only been probably 15, 16 years ago. But looking in between the eyes. Oh, I'm going to let him swim around. Yeah, crappie love structure. So if you can find <clears throat> the brush pile in, in public uh, waters to say if I was going out to Toledo Bend trying to catch crappie I'd look for brush piles well unless you have 
some high tech scanning equipment it's hard to find them if you don't know a general area where it might be already ponds such as this you look for trees in the water or or well mostly trees in the water a lot of people actually get uh christmas trees when they go on sale you know, after christmas and sink them with cinder blocks and stuff like that oh there's one ah uh, probably a bluegill from the way it tap 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 and then pulled it down which there are some big bluegills in here it's just I believe my hook might be a little large for most of them. Okay. Already got a bite, I think. Yep, already got hit. Swimming around with it. Eh, maybe that is just the shiner swimming with it. It's not pulling it under. Oh, that was definitely a bite. Did you get my bait? He got my shiner. Tricky little son of a gun. Right. I'm going to show you another way of hooking one. This usually works with bigger baits, but go underneath the bottom lip and out the top. You would typically do that with larger shiners or larger shad if you're using a live bait. There's a bite. What do we got here? Got a little bass. There we go. Started slowing down a bit. See you later, buddy. Oh, there's a fish. A little bass. <laughs> I barely got him with the tip. Just the tip. Yeah, it's just the tip. I ain't gonna worry about taking a picture of him. They're all the same size. People wouldn't think I'm taking a picture of the same fish. Kelly J uh, prop bait on. I don't really, I'm not sure if that's the actual name of it or if that was the designer. Uh, it's been a while since I bought it and I don't remember exactly what it was called. I haven't caught any fish on it. It's kind of an interesting, it's not a top water unless you reel it fast. It's, it is a, a subsurface, but it's, it's more like a wake bait.
now that I'm over here. Oh, oh I missed him. It hit. No, man. What did I do? It hit the water and a fish come and grabbed it. That was cool. If I hadn't been a Guggen and did this. That's some kind of knot. I probably could have threw back in there real quick and got him to hit it again, which he might still be there. Wash it off really quick. Let's see. Still over there, guy? All one head at it. Missed it. So I missed two fish right here in this corner. Make a long cast down this bank. Hopefully. Oh, I missed that one somehow. I got wrapped up again. Dang it. Yeah, I think it's twisted up. Yep. That actually seems like, oh, I landed right on top of one, it seemed like. There's one. I got him on. Skip him across the water. Oh, and he come off. That one. There's one. There we go. First fish on this bait. Dinkster, but it's a fish. Top water fish that, that, that makes it a little bit better. Close your mouth. Close your mouth, it'll be easier to get this thing out. All right, there we go. A little dink. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> that one run up and grabbed right here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool hit. I seen where he come from, just a few feet in front, no, a few feet off the bank, smacked it. He wasn't getting off of it, that's for sure. There we go. Another little little guy they're all about the same size see, oop, hey hold on chill out see you later buddy that one was still green <laughs> he didn't get to fight any
There's another one. That one hit it real light. Let's skim him across a little, little dinky one. I don't know how I missed that fish. My line jumped and everything. Turned the camera off and as soon as it did, I started getting a bite. Uh -huh. Hadn't pulled it under, but it's moving around. I'm worried it's a turtle. been seeing a lot of turtles. Oh, that might not be a turtle. I don't know. Nope, not a turtle. <laughs> a big old bluegill. There we go. There's the size bluegills that are in here. I'm pretty sure he swallowed that because he was swimming around with it for a while. But yeah, nice bluegill. When we first moved here, when I first started fishing out of here, you catch, I literally kept count one day and then I caught 98 blue well sunfish in an evening not even a whole day and they would be like that big so this goes to show you what happens when you have predators in a body of water to keep everything in check your fish actually get bigger out of him and i cut it off uh it's a little rust out it's already actually a little bit rusted but, uh, he's not bleeding or anything so, see you later buddy get well I would throw it right on top of a turtle literally there it went under let him take it you got him whoa don't get in the trees, don't get in the trees. You're going to the trees, get away from the trees. And he's hung up in the trees. Found. Yeah, he got himself out. I'm gonna swim around the tree. Right now he's out. Go on now. Yeah, there we go. And it's not even anything that impressive. It's just ultra light rod with a what a four pound line. A little dink bass. See you later. out of the trash I think it's a bluegill it is it's a big old gill check that guy out that's a pretty pretty bluegill check 
check out those colors guys see if I can get him in the light here so he's kind of a brownish color up here pink and a pink copperish color here um, I don't believe it's actually a copper nose because normally they have more color on their face but bluegills have just oddball colors sometimes Alright, he's not, he didn't swallow it, he's just got it down in there, down in the back. I'm going to work on this guy and get it out, and I'll be right back with you guys. Alright guys, there's that fish, got the hook out, let's get him back. See you later, buddy. Alright, I still have bait and he's fairly lively and bluegills really don't care if it's live or not most of the time so i'm gonna throw it back in there just see what happens i might have to change put a fresh one on here in a second all right guys i got something here I'm trying to get him out of the trees dang it I don't know, maybe it might have came off right as it got to the tree. And of course, I get hung in the tree. And it's not going to come off. I really don't want to walk over this beaver dam. I might have to. Because this is my last float. I really don't want to lose it. Oh, Lord. Please don't fall. That's not solid. <laughs> off all right mm. got my feet wet for no reason well I say that I don't know maybe I can get out here on it it's not attached to the darn land it's just okay floating here this ain't attached to hardly anything. <laughs> well, there's all the fish around here and I'm still gonna break this off. Oh, it didn't, I didn't lose my float. I did all that. didn't have to ruin that fishing spot well folks it's gonna be it for today uh got plenty of footage hope you guys learned something hope uh, I was able to show you some uh, new techniques if you didn't know, know already uh, hope you liked the video just in general uh, I've got just a little bit of battery left a little bit of daylight left um, yeah well I have to do it again uh, oh I, I thought I'd get a lot more crappie than I did um, I mean ain't no telling where they are they might be out in the middle deep or they might be up here next to the bank i don't know uh, might be just as active as the bass are yeah just there 
they're, they weren't where I thought they were going to be. So, hope you guys like and subscribe if you haven't already. And see y'all next time.